He said, he said, the latest in the war of words between Trudeau and Polyev on foreign interference. This is Now You Know. I'm Rob Snow. Deeper than the headlines. The answers you need to know. This is Now You Know with Rob Snow on News Radio. Dropping bombs. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau used his appearance at the Commission investigating foreign interference to go after the Conservatives, and in particular, the leader of the Conservative Party, Pierre Polyev. Appearing as one of the final witnesses at this commission, Mr. Trudeau claimed he knows the names of Conservative parliamentarians, current and former, and Conservative candidates who are engaged in foreign interference or at risk of being engaged in foreign interference. These were some of the comments that set political Ottawa on fire. Because I am Prime Minister and privy to all these informations, I have the names of a number of parliamentarians, former parliamentarians and or candidates in the Conservative Party of Canada who uh, are engaged or at high risk of or for whom there is clear intelligence around foreign interference. And I have directed CSIS and others to try and inform the Conservative Party leader to um, be warned and armed to be able to make decisions that protect the integrity of that party, of its members, from attempts at foreign activities around foreign interference. Mr. Trudeau then went on to criticize the leader of the Conservative Party, Mr. Polyev, for his refusal to obtain the clearance needed in order to learn about these claims. Mr. Trudeau said that decision lacks common sense. The decision by the leader of the Conservative Party to not get those classified briefings means that nobody in his party, not him, um, and nobody in a position of power knows the names of these individuals and can take appropriate action. It also means nobody's there to stand up for those individuals if the in- intelligence is shoddy or, or, or incomplete or just allegations from a single source. Um, and that is something that, that, as you've seen, we are ready to question intelligence when it comes towards the Liberal Party members because we need to make sure if you're going to end someone's career, you're doing it in a responsible way. The decision of the leader of the Conservative Party to not receive the necessary clearance to get those names and protect the integrity of his party um, is bewildering to me and entirely lacks common sense. Shortly after those claims hit the news, Pierre Polyev issued a statement calling the Prime Minister a liar. He said Mr. Trudeau's making things up. Polyev repeated his demand that Trudeau release the names of all MPs from any party who may have collaborated with foreign governments. Polyev said Mr. Trudeau is just trying to distract from the fact he faces turmoil within his own caucus with some Liberal MPs planning to ask Mr. Trudeau to step down as leader of the Liberal Party. Later, during his testimony, when he was being questioned by a lawyer from the Conservative Party, Mr. Trudeau did admit that he also knows the names of Liberal office holders who are also alleged to have participated in foreign interference operations. Mr. Trudeau claimed he's taken action on that because he has the security clearance and Polyev doesn't. I'd like to ask you, are you aware of the names of any Liberal parliamentarians, former parliamentarians or candidates that are at risk of being compromised by FI? Yes, and for other parties as well, because I have access to uh, large amounts of information. Right. You didn't mention those today, right? 
Um, we spent an entire uh, session, uh, the last time we had a public hearing, talking about uh, concerns and named individuals that, uh, that, the, uh, that CSIS and intelligence agencies had uh, within the Liberal Party. Don Valley North comes to mind as a riding. So right. as I have said many times, there have been actions taken uh, and choices made based on information we got because I had that security clearance. Right. Mr. Polyev has decided not not to get that security clearance, so he can't even know how to begin or not to make decisions regarding that information. But the lawyer for the Conservative Party wasn't buying what Mr. Giordo was selling, pointing to a part of the CSIS Act that would allow CSIS to inform Polyev of any threats to national security without meeting any special clearance, something called a Threat Reduction Measure, or TRM. He accused Mr. Trudeau of grandstanding here as part of that exchange. The TRM could be directed to Mr. Polyev. The identities of the people involved um, are themselves classified uh, and available to only those with top secret clearances. So certainly CSIS could go to uh, the leader of the opposition and say, you really have to be careful to instruct all of your MPs to stay away from this country or to be concerned about diplomats from that country or not accept money, but from or not accept uh, support from these particular diplomats, but the TRM would be unable to identify which of those individuals are in question unless the leader chose to get a security clearance to be able to hear those names. And the fact that the leader does not leaves him in a position of being unable to protect the integrity of his party. I'm going to suggest that you're wrong on your understanding of the law as to what a TRM can and can't do and who it can be directed to. And I'm going to suggest that the, the fact that you leveled this accusation earlier today and didn't mention the possibility of a TRM was just for the purpose of grandstanding here today. In his statement, Mr. Polyeb said his chief of staff has received classified briefings from the government and has never been told about conservative office holders being engaged in foreign interference. And also, Polyev says he was briefed by top national security officials about the India situation and claimed that he can be briefed on such matters without being sworn to secrecy. But Polyev has also said in the past, if he reads the report from earlier this year from the ENSICOP Committee on Foreign Interference, he would never be able to speak about it and that that is an attempt by Mr. Trudeau to muzzle him. I'm Rob Snow. This is Now You Know on News Radio. You have questions. Now You Know with Rob Snow has the answers on News Radio. A busy program ahead for you. Any moment now, we expect to connect with Michael Tobe. He's our friend on the right side of things, syndicated columnist. And to speak about what Mr. Trudeau said yesterday, about conservative parliamentarians and foreign interference and Paulia firing back and say, name them, release the names. Uh, and as well, a, a, a big interview and and uh, widely watched and, and, and closely watched here in the final few weeks of the U.S. election campaign, Kamala Harris kind of going into uh, uncharted territory and uh, doing an interview with uh, with Fox News. So a big score for Fox News. We'll ask Michael. I'm sure he's watched it, how, uh, how he thought Kamala Harris actually did during that uh, interview. As well, uh, our Newsday panel is coming up right after the news. At the bottom of the hour with uh, Chris Day, who's spent some time uh, working for a foreign affairs minister, a uh, longtime conservative uh, strategist as well. So it'd be good to get Chris's take on everything that's going on with the uh, foreign interference file. I mean, it is uh, the talk of Ottawa. There are really two big stories coming out of political Ottawa, all of this back and forth over foreign interference. And the other is uh, Justin Trudeau's hold over uh, over the Liberal Party right now. Uh, with all of this plotting and scheming and rumors happening in the, in the background about MPs wanting to um, ask Mr. Trudeau to step aside as a liberal leader. All of that is expected to come to a head on, 
Wednesday of next week. The House of Commons is off this week. Uh, they'll resume things next week. Not that much is getting done in Parliament these days, but uh, they are expected to pick up business next week. And every Wednesday, all of the political parties hold what are known as their caucus meetings, and it is, it is expected to be quite an event. Uh, they are typically closed to the public. You don't see what's going on. It's all behind closed doors. And uh, that is apparently when people are going to um, vent their frustrations at uh, the lack of progress for the Liberals in the polls and trying to narrow this, uh, what would seem to be a 20-point gap between uh, the Liberals and the Conservatives right now. So th those are really the two big stories in political Ottawa. We will talk about those. There, there are increasing rumblings that the Prime Minister may be getting ready um, to prorogue uh, Parliament something that the, the Liberals were very critical of when, when Stephen Harper did it. Uh, the Prime Minister did it once before, Mr. Trudeau, during, uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. And there are all kinds of rumblings that Mr. Trudeau may be set to prorogue, prorogue again, that there could be a, a fall economic statement, what amounts to um, a Liberal budget. It, it is that time of year. After all, for fall economic statements, the one from the Ontario government is coming out in uh, just a few weeks from now, and uh, that there would be a fall economic statement. This is the state of the government's finances, financially, fiscally. These are the uh, priorities for the government right now. This is where things stand with debts and deficits and all of that stuff, economic growth. And then they would prorogue the legislature, probably sometime in November. The House is supposed to be sitting until... December 17th, I don't think too many people see it lasting that long. So the thinking is take a break early, uh, hit the reset button because all bills get shelved if you prorogue parliament, all committee work stops, uh, maybe even come back later, maybe sometime in February instead of late January, get working on a budget that would be presented in uh, the spring. and. That would serve that budget as a liberal election platform and all the political parties would come together perhaps at that time and say enough is enough and this parliament has lasted long enough and it is time to go to the polls and we would be in a general election in the spring instead of this uh, minority government, say, surviving until October of next year. So that is the thinking in uh, in politics right now. Unfortunately, we're having trouble connecting with, with Michael Tobe, so we will take a quick break and be right back. I'm Rob Snow. This is Now You Know, and this is News Radio. No question goes unasked or unanswered. Now you know with Rob Snow returns on News Radio. Here with David Smith on a Thursday. David, week is flying by. Don't you love these four day work weeks? Oh, David? I could get used to these. Let me tell you. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I wonder if this is something we have to get used to. You know, we've talked a lot about housing density and intensification. Usually that means, you know, um, Tearing down the old bungalow and putting up a fourplex that creates a you know a lot of controversy uh, in neighborhoods that are traditionally lined with with single family homes. You remember how intense the debate was in Calgary over blanket rezoning, right? Hundreds and hundreds of people showed up, and the the meeting lasted for weeks. Oh, yeah. Well, this is this story is kind of a different twist on that, I think, because the old style bungalow remains intact. This is uh, on a street uh, called Whitaker Close Northeast in Calgary, a house for sale for $500,000. Tiny, tiny house. Like, no, it's not big. It's not a palace. Not a big house. <laughs> like it's 1,100 square feet, yeah. right? 1,100 square feet. So, you know, a little kind of uh, little, little bungalow built in 1980, it says. Nice little place. Um, yeah, a little front yard, a little backyard, nice tree in the front yard, whatever. Yeah. Um, very average looking house, nondescript, I would say. 
And um, it has a rather unique feature, however. It has 13 bedrooms. <laughs> 13 bedrooms. David, can you imagine 13 <laughs> bedrooms in an 1,100-square-foot house? Like, what are they up to with this house? I don't know. It's crazy. What is going on here, right? Yeah. Single-family home built in 1980 with 30, <laughs> 1,108 square feet. The, I, we have the MLS listing here. The main level has six bedrooms, six bedrooms, a uh, four-piece bathroom, two-piece bathroom, and a shared kitchen. The basement features seven additional bedrooms, seven additional bedrooms, and one bathroom and a shared laundry room. Seven additional bedrooms in the basement. And uh, our our City News colleagues uh, point out that one of the, like, one of the bedrooms has, is 57 square feet, David. Yeah. Like that's... 57 square feet. Like, that's not a bedroom. That's a, <laughs> that's a jail cell. It's a closet. <laughs> you know, it's a closet. 57, 57 square feet. What is that? Like seven, seven eighths. Uh, yeah. Like seven feet by eight feet. Like that's one of your, that's one of the bedrooms. You've got to be kidding. Uh, each bedroom ranges in size from 57 feet to 130 square feet in size. But each room has a window. <laughs> yeah. According to the layout. Okay. Well, that was the big concern from the community that prompted the complaint was to be compliant with the fire code. Every bedroom needs to have a a, a form of egress, a way out an, of the an house, egress right? window. But right. from the outside, it would appear that this crazy house is actually in compliance with that. That's that's the crazy part to me. Yeah. So I guess city inspectors have been there. The Fire inspectors are going to go over it and they're going to be looking for, you know, land use bylaw compliance and fire and building code compliance. But um, I don't know if anybody is in the market for a half a million dollar house that's 1,108 square feet, but does have 13, (laughs) I still can't get over that, 13 bedrooms. Um, maybe this is the property for you. Property taxes are pretty cheap. Yeah. 2,600 bucks a year. So anyway, the realtor's name number right there. Apparently there are multiple viewings happening every day. So there, there is interest in it. Well, I, so I was on Reddit looking, looking into this story. There's always good stuff on Reddit on these weird local stories. And I can't confirm if this is true, but one Redditor posted that, each of these bedrooms was renting for $300 a month. Wow. $300 a month is pretty cheap, but you're living in. Yeah. I got 57 I square feet. I don't even know. <laughs> in a jail cell. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 57 square feet. Okay. You know, single beds only, I guess, for yeah. that place. Okay. Uh, we'll stop here. We'll pick things up with our Newsday panel. We'll talk about issues of foreign interference. Justin Trudeau's. Uh, leadership the possibility that there could be a a prorogation of parliament and maybe even if we have time my gosh the bc election is pretty soon saturday bc election day and uh, the weather's not looking good for election day i wonder if that will affect the the turnout it's been quite a race out there on the west coast and ask our panelists about that coming up i brought snow this is news radio thinking is not dead now you know with rob snow returns on news radio the newsday panel and the gang's all here and today's newsday panel includes chris day back with us president winston wilmont great to hear from you chris day i'm nice to be back with you and uh, cam holmstrom is back with us principal at neat boy strategies how are you cam oh i'm getting by rob i'm getting by well, that's good. That's good. Okay, it's good that you're getting by. My gosh, there's a lot happening. I mean, it is a break week for the House of Commons, but it's just jam-packed with political news. Uh, let's start, Cam, and get your reaction to 
what Mr. Trudeau claimed yesterday about the Conservatives and foreign interference and gather your thoughts on Paul Ayeb's response to those claims. What what do you make of it all? Oh, Rob, I've got some thoughts on this. Well, I'm going to put this in a context, if you don't mind. What happened on Monday when the RCMP came out and said what they said first, right? And then obviously the Prime, the prime Minister came out later and all of that and said what he had to say, but really didn't stray from it. I think a lot of Canadians looked at that, heard that, and thought, wow, this is serious. This is very serious. This is We need our people to deal with this, right? We need it to be done in a serious manner. Well, then 48 hours later, 48 hours later, Prime Minister goes before an inquiry. He knows he's going to be testifying. He knows this is coming. He knows this question will be coming. And to go where he went, was it out of bounds? No. Was it the right time, especially given the context of what just happened a couple of days ago, to go down that road? I would argue no. I don't think it helped anything. And okay, why is, course, why is that? Why is that? Why do you say that, if you don't mind? Well, because it's pointing out the obvious. We've all been saying he should have his clearance now for the longest time, right? Okay, all right. So, all right. other than trying to drive home the partisan point at that point, what, it, what is it doing to solve the problem, I guess I'd put it, okay? But he did it because he wanted to score a partisan point, and he knew it would set off Mr. Polyev. And then, like clockwork, came the reply, which was just about, uh, you know what? In this moment, I would have hoped he would have risen to the moment. That was about the about exactly what I would have expected in the worst case scenario. He comes out, he attacks him, calls him a liar, even though because he doesn't have his clearance, he can't verify for himself that the man's not lying, not lying or not. Then, of course, Jagmeet Singh comes out later, who actually read the report and got the clearance, said he's not lying. He didn't say he didn't give names because he can't, but he said what he could say. All this is to say is that we have a serious problem in front of us. We need our okay. politicians to be serious about actually solving it and not playing the usual political games and not trying to score your political points and not looking through that partisan lens. This needs to be bigger. And unfortunately, I look at those two and I saw what happened yesterday. And it's right. like the only, the only people who are happy watching that, it's President Xi, President Putin. They're, laugh, they're laughing. They're, you know, what's off at this? this, this they're like, saying, this exactly okay, in want. your opinion, they're saying mission accomplished. Okay, let's oh, hear yeah. from uh, uh, Chris and get Chris's reaction. First of all, on the claims that, that Mr. Trudeau <laughs> made yesterday, and then the response from Mr. Polyev. Your thoughts on that, Chris? Well, so I, I've, I've asked a couple of liberal friends of mine what they thought about it. And, and okay. you know, they even the ones that thought that the prime minister dealt with the India question on Monday uh, really well, um, to Cam's point, we're really disappointed that he undermined the national security is too important for partisanship argument by being partisan at that commission. And, um, you know, I think there is an argument to be said that, you know, we need to, to overcome uh, find a way forward that overcomes partisanship when it comes to national security matters that affect our demo- like the foundations of our democratic institutions. I, I think I've said on this program before, I think that we should absolutely know as Canadians who the uh, you know potential compromised folks are. And I, I don't think that that, you know, my opinion on that has not changed. Um, I thought his, uh, I thought Mr. Polyev's reply yesterday was actually a decent one. Okay. In that, in that he said, release the names. If you've got evidence, release the names of all parties, uh, actors who are compromised, and let Canadians judge for themselves. I also found it very interesting that he made the point in that statement that the person who Mr. Polyev has delegated to be briefed on this file. Uh, because he does not want to be seen as lying either outright or or by omission to Canadians on something this serious, because to hide behind, you know, uh, I can't, you know, I know this stuff, but I can't tell you about it, only, you know, wears thin really quickly, um, is, is his chief of staff. And his chief of staff was briefed, but was not told any of this information either, as I understand it, because as some national security folks have argued, um, that you know the chief of staff to the leader is not in a need to know role. I think that fundamentally okay. 
disagree, I think that fundamentally misunderstands the power and the scope of power that uh, the chief of staff to a party leader actually has with respect to Chris, important Chris, decisions Chris, Chris, like candidacy, Chris, Chris, Congress okay, management, okay. and various other things. Okay, Chris, Chris, you Chris, want Chris, in there? Chris. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry, yeah. I have to, Chris, and I respect you. I understand what you're, where you're coming from, where you're trying to go here. But I'm sorry, the chief of staff, to try to say that the, the role at the end of the day of the chief of staff is to basically be doing this is not the case. A chief of staff will need to know sometimes because they're with their, they're with their boss when they're doing it. The idea that the chief of staff is what you should know and the boss needs to be kept ignorant, that's crazy. That's nutty. And you know what? The easiest solution, and honestly, I pointed out Mr. Singh's example for a reason, is that you saw what he put out. He, put, he just basically said, there, he, there were conservatives named, period. He didn't give out the names. He didn't leak any secret details. He just stated that fact. There, you can go so far. Is it comfortable? Is it great? No. But guess what? If Mr. Polyev's going to be prime minister, that's what he's going to do. Like, is Mr. Polyev's position that as prime minister, he's going to remain ignorant to these things or that he's not going to keep national secrets or that he's not going to protect means and methods of collection? Like, I'm sorry, like, you know what? That is the job. And to me, this idea that, you know, I'm going to keep myself ignorant so I don't know, like, see, that's what upset me. That, that, honestly, that's what set me off more than anything else. It's not only that he said, called release the names, he called them a liar. He doesn't know. And the thing is, he could know. That's what kills me. He could find out. We could all know. Okay, okay. We could all know. Release the names. Okay. We'd all know. Okay, 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 okay. Well, I, I want to pick up on that, but we'll have to wait until we come back. I'm Rob Snow. This is now, you know, it's our Newsday panel here on News Radio. You know, with Rob Snow continues on News Radio. Back with our Newsday panelists today, Chris Day from Winston Wilmot and Cam Holmstrom from Deep Away Strategies. What, what what do you what do you think about this call? Release the names. Release the names. You think we should release the names? The Prime Minister should release the names? Name names, Chris Day. What do you think, Chris Day? Well, I, I absolutely do because I, I want to pick up on. Okay. I, I, I want to pick up on what Cam was saying earlier, and the time, and the fundamental difference between what's at stake here versus, uh, you know, what maybe you know a prime minister or ministers are are dealing with in the, in the course of day to day executive decision making. Uh, because I work for two cabinet ministers who were very much you know briefed constantly on um, national security matters and had to make executive decisions. Uh, as prime ministers and ministers do, that impacted, um, you know, and that they could impact and, and affect. What is different here and why I think this is so important that Canadians need to know this information is because it's Canadians that are making decisions about who they elect and who they send it and who they put their trust in in the House of Commons to represent their interests. And so if we're not giving them the basic information that, by the way, they pay for in terms of collection, then we're doing a disservice to them and a disservice to our democracy. And the other thing here that I think is really important to keep in mind about why politicians ought to be very careful about lying outright or by omission on this file is that trust is at an all-time low in this country, in our democratic institutions in particular, and anything that undermines that trust does us all a disservice in the long run. And I think this type of discussion that we've been having over the last few days, the last few weeks, the last few months, is doing no one any favors. And in fact, it, it covers a lot of people with glory. Re- release the names. What do you think about that, Cam? You know release what? the I, names. I, I, agree, I agree with Chris on the last part here, because you know what? Okay. He's right. It does okay. do a disservice, and it does do damage to our institutions when a politician who does not have security clearance or refuses to get it makes a public statement, a written statement, which is outside the House of Commons and open to, libel, to a libel lawsuit if everyone wanted to do it, and says that the person who is testifying under oath, who has security clearance, and who has the information, it says they are lying. That somehow they know when they don't have the information, they don't want to get the information, yet the one who has it and has seen it and has taken the responsibility with it is the liar. That, to me, undermines institutions. Chris is right about that. And I think I hope Mr. Pauli ever reflects on that. The fact of the matter is this. We have to pull back a step here. And the step is that 
there are people's lives directly involved and at risk because of this. You're talking about our, our, our civil servants, our people who work in the agencies who do this collection, who, you know, who are putting their lives on the line to find these things out. And obviously, releasing this information can, rele- can in- inadvertently give out information about methods and how it was collected. That's what, because that's what, more correct, what foreign services do. They look to see what others are doing in publicly released information. But also, the fact of the matter is, is that it could actually put direct Canadians at risk. Like, this has not been lost on me, that during that whole, during everything that happened on Monday, that it was pointed out that one of the individuals who's, who's imminently at risk, which is why the RCP went forward, is Mr. Singh himself. Think right, about right. that. We have got the leader of a national party who's a national police force is saying is at risk of being murdered by the by a the foreign government. Ally or right. not, I don't okay. care. Okay, okay, and okay. Th- but what if there what if there are we're not gonna worry Cam, about let me jump in there, Cam. Let me let, let yeah. me jump in there. What if there are and I'm not saying this is the case, but um what, what you know, what if there are parliamentarians who will be up for election soon? Uh, who may have a role to play in whatever threats Mr. Singh is facing or whatever other kind of foreign and affairs Rob, operations are, are, are being run in this country. Don't Canadians have a right to know who those people are? Rob, and you know what? I actually agree with you on that. But guess okay. what? The solution, what? The, there is no easy solution to this. I wish there was. I, know. I absolutely wish there was. That would be so simple. But the fact is, is that it doesn't exist right now. There is a reason why we have these rules. And guess what? If we had our our political leaders, especially the two main ones, if they could put the partisan crap aside for a while, tone down the rhetoric, and actually sit down and have a conversation to figure a way out how to do that, we would all be better off for it. And that's right, what's right. upsetting me about this moment. That's not happening. Okay. Okay. When we come back, uh, we'll talk about the turmoil within the uh, Liberal Party. Mr. Trudeau's losing four more cabinet ministers. It's going to be a cabinet shuffle. Four uh, more cabinet ministers. Not uh, what I would call household names, but they're leaving. I'm going to seek re-election. So we'll get some reaction to that. What could happen Wednesday of next week when Parliament is back and Liberals have that caucus meeting? Oh, to be a fly on the wall in that room. I'm Rob Snow. It's our Newsday panel here on News Radio. Now you know with Rob Snow continues on News Radio. Chris Dankham, Holmstrom, I'm Rob Snow. Um, how do you like the chances of this liberal mini revolt succeeding to out- oust Mr. Trudeau? Chris, what do you think the chances are there? I think it was a couple of days ago I said that this is the most boring palace coup we've ever seen, and it's only gotten marginally <laughs> more interesting um, okay. in that you know more details are coming out uh, about the signatories. Some people have started stepping up and putting their names to such calls. Um, and as more and more people do that, I think it becomes uh, an even more interesting story and one that uh, is, it becomes a bit more difficult to contain. What kills um, governments of, of a certain age <laughs> and uh, you know, issues of a certain type is the constant drip, drip, drip of information. And you're seeing that here big time. And every single day it puts... Uh, the, the leader and, and those around him uh, on their right. heels and el- yep. it prevents them from, you know, getting ahead with, uh, you know, things that they might want to actually focus on. <laughs> very, very difficult situation. Uh, and I, I think that caught And, and the loss, the, the, the pending loss, they need to do another cabinet shuffle and the, the news that four uh, cabinet ministers will not reoffer. I mean, that doesn't improve the situation. Yeah, And you also have to wonder, this news coming out about these four, is that related to what has been happening behind the scenes with unhappy MPs? Are these four saying, I'm I'm out of here because maybe I want to speak more freely on Mr. Trudeau's leadership? I've heard some chatter about that very point today, so. Right, okay. Cam? That would add up to be, like, if I look at the four who are walking away, right, you've got, you've got, uh, Minister Bibo in, in a Quebec seat, which, frankly, how she's held on with this long, I'm surprised. Not because of her as a minister, but because of the liberal brand in that part of Quebec. Um, when I look at Philomena Tassi, yeah, her seat's definitely in danger. In Hamilton, it could go red, it could, it could go blue, it could go orange. 
I look at Dan Van Dahl and, and St. Boniface. That's one I find very interesting because okay. St. Boniface is one of the the you know safer seats that if, if there if there is such a thing for a liberal in Winnipeg, but it's one where it takes things to go pretty far for it really to get on the radar, and then it could go blue, it could go orange. So to see Minister Van Dahl step aside tells me, okay, you know what? These are people who are they're making business decisions at this point, right? So oh, okay. They've done what they right. can do. And when I look at what's happening with the whole thing overall, is that do I think it's good? Do I do I'm, I do I think it's going to work? I don't, and it's not because I don't. I don't think it's for a, a bad strategy or a lack of trying, or even the amount of pressure they're going to put on. Because it's clear it's growing and it's growing. Yeah. In order for it to work, you need to have a, a person at the top who has enough self awareness, or at least has enough care for the institution that he's leading to to care about its survival and its health beyond him, and. That's not Justin Trudeau. That's just okay. not him. He truly okay. doesn't care at this point. He truly believes that he, like, honestly, like, if anything clinched it for me, it was he, actually th- he thinks he's party. their best shot, right? Well, in his mind. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. actually, I think what we saw. Well, I mean, honestly, it might be true, he, actually. It might like, be true. Rob, you know, genuinely, yeah. if, if he was genuinely thinking that any hint that he would walk away, I don't think he pulls off the stunt he pulled off before the whole commission yesterday. I think yeah. it's because he's staying. That's why he did that. And to me, that's a terrible mix. And I think what you're going to start seeing is, yeah, those those members of that caucus more and more won't run. Some might just walk away right there. Heck, some might even cross the floor. But you know what? It's going to get really lonely for Mr. Trudeau. And he'll have, and you know what? It'll be like one of my favorite Simpsons episodes. It's going to be, <laughs> okay. a, it's going to turn into okay. a no justice club. But oh, yeah, okay. Okay. All right. All here. right. Okay. All right. Uh, very quickly, um, gosh, this BC election campaign has just been fascinating to watch, I have to say, just because it was never supposed to be like this so many months ago. But here we are. I mean, Election Day Saturday, the weather is going to be miserable uh, across BC, apparently, on Election Day. Maybe that impacts outcome. <laughs> quick, just a very quick prediction, because we have less than a minute. Who wins this thing? Conservatives or New Democrats? Chris? Uh, I think too close to call in terms of the outcome based on eight sort of seats that uh, could decide the whole thing. Um, I think the Conservatives have won by virtue of coming from zero to where they are uh, already, and uh, we'll see who actually forms government. Okay. Cam? I think it's always going to be too close to call, but where I think the the difference is going to come in, it's the the former BC United, BC Liberal MLAs who decided to run as independents, that in those ridings, what happens? Do they hold vote? Do they... I don't think they're going to win any seats. Okay. Okay. Like what margin do they take, and who does that send over the top? Because I think that could be the thing that stops the. Oh, interesting. All there. right. Yeah, it'd be a late. Be one reason to stay up late on Saturday. Thank you, both of you. Great conversation today. Really appreciate it. Bye bye. Thanks, guys. Cam Holmstrom, Chris Day, Newsday panel, talk back, just ahead on News Radio. It's time to talk back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. Call now and have your say. 1-833-668-2577. Well, welcome to Talk Back. Two hours of debate and discussion on some of the big issues of the day. A couple of items for you to think about today. Offer an opinion. And our phone lines are open right now. 1-833-668-2577. We want to talk about foreign interference and what you think should happen now, given what the Prime Minister alleged yesterday, and we also want to talk about pot and legalizing cannabis in Canada. Today is the anniversary of that, the legalization of cannabis in Canada. So uh, we want to get your thoughts on a few um, cannabis-related issues. So on foreign interference, by now, I'm sure you've probably heard the news about Mr. Trudeau appearing at the inquiry, appearing at the commission into foreign interference yesterday, used that appearance to go after Pierre Polyev, the leader of the Conservative Party. Mr. Trudeau said he has names of conservative parliamentarians, former parliamentarians, current parliamentarians, conservative candidates who are, and I'm quoting here, engaged or are at high risk or for whom there is clear intelligence around Foreign interference. And he said Pierre Polyev's decision to forego getting a security clearance so he can 
know more about these activities and these individuals. Prime Minister Trudeau called that bewildering and entirely lacking of common sense. That's all according to Mr. Trudeau. Now, long, not long after that news hit, Pierre Polyev issued a statement of his own. He said Mr. Trudeau's lying. And he once more called on Mr. Trudeau to release the names of any and all MPs from any and all parties who have, quote, collaborated with foreign interference. He went on to say that his chief of staff has the appropriate security clearance and has received classified briefings from the government. And at no time has he been told or has his chief of staff been told about conservatives participating in, in foreign interference. And uh, Paul have said it's all a distraction. From the turmoil in the Liberal Party, because Mr. Trudeau's facing this revolt against his own leadership of the Liberal Party, and that's really what all of this is about. So that's according to Pierre Polyev. So we have this he said, he said situation. What should happen now? That's what we want to know what you think. That's what we're asking you. What should happen now? Should Polyev get that security clearance? In your opinion, learn more about what the Prime Minister says is, is happening? Is happening in his own party, the Conservative Party? Or should Justin Trudeau name names, release those names? And if there are MPs or senators or candidates for office who are not acting in Canada's best interests, then release the names and make them public and we'll take it from there. What do you think? should happen. Listeners to talk back. That's what we want to know on that topic at 1-833-668-2577. 1-833-668-2577. Should Polly have get that clearance and get briefed and find out what's happening? Or should Justin Trudeau release the names? That's topic number one. We've We've talked about that before, but I think it's worth talking about again. I mean, this is a Rather significant development and a very important news story. Topic number two, as I said, uh, cannabis, pot, weed, marijuana, whatever you want to call it. Six years ago today, cannabis became legal in Canada, October 17th of 2018. So uh, we have the benefit of hindsight now. How do you think it's going after all of these years with legalized weed? How's it going? Right decision, wrong decision. If you, um, consume cannabis products do you purchase your cannabis products through legal means a government store private store licensed store or do you still use the so-called black market i'm i have to say i'm also i'm also kind of curious i'm just gonna throw this out there for our listeners in nova scotia today why do so many people in nova scotia smoke weed uh, according to all the statistics, people in Nova Scotia smoke the most weed in Canada when you compare it to all the other provinces. Why? Why is that? Why is that? Why are so many people smoking pot in Nova Scotia? And look, given that the government legalized cannabis, what do you think about the idea of legalizing other recreational drugs like um, magic mushrooms, for example, or LSD? Would you be open to something like that? Or do you think that would be a bad idea? You know, there are these illegal shops that are operating all across the country selling magic mushrooms, for example, already. It's illegal to do that, but it doesn't stop them. Same way illegal pot shops were operating ahead of, of legalization. Sometimes the shops are raided and they close them down. They open up the very next day. But legalizing other recreational drugs, not hard drugs, but what I would call recreational drugs, magic mushrooms, LSD, do you, would you support those drugs being legal as well? What's your opinion on that? And pot cafes, I've always been interested in, in that topic too. Letting private businesses offer a place for cannabis users to do their thing in a social setting. Are you open to that? Share your thoughts, please. A lot to talk about today. Let's get it going here. one 888 2577 If you're a first-time caller, just mention that to uh, Andrea, and we will make your call a a priority. Luann in uh, Calgary. Hi, Luann. Well, hello. How are you today? I'm good, Luann. Thank you. Bring out the names. Bring them all out. Cut the BS. Name the names. I almost said a bad word on the radio. Sorry about that. That's okay. Cut the BS. All right. <laughs> Get it going. 
stop the drama. He might be a drama teacher at some point, but he's not a drama teacher now. Cut the BS. Okay. And why is that your opinion? Why I just do you think believe that? that politicians are not above or beneath the laws. If someone's okay. doing something wrong, get it out there, get it dealt with, and for heaven's sakes, get over yourself. Okay. What about uh, the potential harm to someone's reputation if they're falsely accused? That would be the counterpoint there, Luann. Absolutely, and I think that's a fair comment. But you know what? Someone can accuse me of something, and I have every opportunity to rectify that, to correct it, and then move on. Why is it that this is such a a specialty kind of thing? The politicians put their pants on. My dad's saying was, you put your pants on the same way, one leg at a time, no matter what your position is. And I believe that. Okay. All right, Luann, thank you. You've got us off to a good start. We're just getting going here. I'm Rob Snow. It is Talkback on a Thursday. We're talking about foreign interference, cannabis legalization. Weigh in on either of those topics, please, at one 668 This is News Radio. something on your mind you want everyone to know call now hello 1-833-668-2577 it's talk back on now you know with rob snow topics today foreign interference cannabis legalization what should happen next on foreign interference should paulie have get that security clearance learn more about the allegations that mr trudeau says involve the conservative party or should the prime minister release all the names And this is the sixth anniversary of uh, cannabis legalization in Canada. Right thing to do, wrong thing to do. What do you think about the idea of legalizing more recreational drugs like magic mushrooms or pot cafes? What do you think about places like those being allowed to operate? Where do you buy your cannabis these days? Are are you buying it at legal stores or not? Are you still uh, buying it? Well, I guess illegally. 1-833-668-2577. Rick is in Nova Scotia. Thanks for calling, Rick. Go ahead. Hello, Rick. Rick going once, twice. No Rick in Nova Scotia. Okay, Calvin in Calgary. Calvin. Hello. And good morning. Hi, Calvin. Uh, with regards to the foreign interference, um, I definitely think that Polyev should get his clearance. Um, I just think that would just clear up a lot of the back and forth bickering and trying to make this more of a political issue than it is. And that's not to downgrade the importance of it, but just get it done. And I hate okay. to say this, but uh, when I listened to the uh, testimony from uh, our prime minister, the first thing that came out of my mind within seconds of listening to him is that he's lying. Um, just oh, really? Because, okay. And, and I hate it, it was the tone of his voice. And I didn't okay. see him, but I, I could guarantee that his sleeves were rolled up as well. As soon as he goes out to that soft tone of voice, I just lose all respect for that man. And uh, right. I'm, he was there with his sleeve rolled up because he's a common working man. But uh, right, right. I just think Well, that, I mean, you know, what do you think he's lying about? Well, and, I, and I, you know, honestly, I, that, that was my first thought. It, it makes no point or no sense at all for him to lie about it. Um, but I do okay. think that it... It was just certainly the way he came across. So, so Mr. Polyev, on, on getting this clearance, he says, look, if I get this clearance, I go read this report. I'm never allowed to talk about it. I'm sworn to secrecy. If I talk about any of the details in there, they throw me in prison. Well, you know, and, and that goes along with uh, if any of his cabinet ministers or anyone in the party with clearance gets that and, you know, in turn passes that information on. But I'm, I'm thinking that surely there must be some mechanism within the House of Parliament to, you know, if all three leaders have this and they see that information that they could move forward, you know, in a nonpartisan way for the good of Canada. You know, right. We, we in order to, this. I don't know, kind of isolate the problem, if you will. Yeah. Keep whoever <laughs> those individuals are out of important decision making bodies, committees, whatever. Yeah. And, yeah. And like but you still can't. Earlier, you know, you know, I, think the I guess you couldn't uh, stop them from voting in the end, though. Right. Well, exactly. I, I think the only yeah. ones that are benefiting from this are, you know, the potential interferers. And, uh, you know, if that's the Chinese, the Russian, whomever. Um, all they're doing is just chuckling away to themselves and uh, having a good laugh at our expense as a country. Yeah, it's kind of sad. Okay, 
Thank you, Calvin. Okay. Uh, no Sean problem. in, uh, yep, thank you. Sean in Cambridge. Hi there, Sean. Good afternoon. To yeah, me, this foreign interference is sort of a big deal. And, I would imagine, uh, yeah. Regardless of what you think of Justin Trudeau and the Liberals, that's immaterial to the question at hand, which is Pierre Pauly of not getting security clearance. Uh, I've been in a situation where I had to get security clearance. If he becomes prime minister, he will need to handle classified information. And to me, that does not bode well for his future prospects. Uh, okay. You know, if he's scared to get clearance, that says a lot about a man. But honestly... Uh, he'd rather play politics than do what he needs to do for the country. He's putting his politics ahead of our country. That's not a good thing. Sorry. Okay. He says, uh, just to play devil's advocate here, this is an attempt by Mr. Trudeau to silence him, that if he reads this report, he won't be allowed to comment on any of the, the details that are in that report. Well, you know, I would say, suck it up, Buttercup. you got to find out what's going on. Okay. What do you think yeah, about the idea fine. of releasing these names? Well, you know, uh, House of Commons, uh, he's got to, well, if there's, like somebody said, if these people are innocent, you don't want to tarnish names. But if they right. have had, uh, but if they have done these things, we have a little organization called the RCMP to take care of things, take care of business. Right. To investigate and, late oh, charges, those sorts of things, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, is he now when it comes to these people, is he more interested in making a big political spectacle or is he more interested in justice? That's the other question. If he just wants to provide names in public, to me, that says he's more interested about a big political spectacle and getting things done. All right. OK, thank you, Sean. Thank you. OK, uh, let's stop here and we'll pick it up and take more of your calls before the bottom of the hour. Uh, some phone lines available. It's been busy so far, uh, particularly on the issue of foreign interference. If you want to uh, jump in on that conversation, give us your idea about what should happen next, in your opinion. Should Polly have get that clearance, learn more about these allegations, or should the Prime Minister release all the names of any parliamentarians that have been allegedly involved in foreign interference? Give us your thoughts on that topic. And if you want to weigh in on uh, cannabis legalization on this, the sixth anniversary of this great experiment in Canada, feel free to do so as well. one 888 Talk back on a Thursday on News Radio. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. one 888 2577 It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. On the issue of foreign interference, what should happen next? Should Polyev get that clearance, read the reports, find out what's going on with the Conservatives, given the claims from Mr. Trudeau? Should the Prime Minister release all the names? That's a demand from the Conservatives, has been from the get-go. This is the uh, sixth anniversary of cannabis legalization in Canada. Six years ago, today, that happened. Uh, what would you think if more recreational drugs were legalized? Say, um magic mushrooms what do you think of the idea of pod cafes how do you buy your cannabis products do you buy them at legal stores let's go to lawrence in um, nova scotia lawrence hi there hi rob how are you i'm good lawrence uh, thank you just checking in um some background on the cannabis uh is we're not only the sixth year but this is the probably just around the hundredth year since um a, a Juvenile court judge from uh, Winnipeg, I believe, or somewhere in the, in the Alberta, maybe her name was, uh, uh, pen name was Janie Canuck, and she wrote a, a book, uh, an article basically called The Black Candle, and she was, uh, okay. uh, uh, she was responsible for the racial comments made on uh, the, the Asian uh, population out west who were part of the railroad. And they were using opium. They had opium, what they called dens, but their opium consumption. Uh, okay, she okay. Like the the uh, Asians and then the Mexicans coming in with their cannabis and uh, the black population. And it's all articled in the this book, The Black Candle. Um, she was a magistrate, a, a ju judicial or a juvenile judge. And um, by that occasion in 1920, uh, the book came out in 21 or 22, and that led to the discrimination of uh, 
all all drug users, which uh, okay. was under okay. the Narcotics Control Act, as you know, and that led to the war on drugs. And you know what happened down in the states, and it, and it it led to a lot of deaths and and police uh, court time. Um, it was, oh, sure. it was just sure. a yeah. Yeah. boondoggle, and and they had no scientific proof or or anything to lead to it. It was just her opinion, and which put a lot of people in jail. People died, and it was unfortunate. Um, I've been a consumer for since I was twenty, so uh, the last forty eight years, and. Oh, okay. um, you know, so let me ask you a few questions, Lawrence. Uh, where are you buying it these days now that it's legal to buy it? Well, I've got a lot of friends. I, I won't <laughs> go to the government. I, I refuse to go, to, go the to the government and buy their, okay. their, their product. Um, All right. It's just, in, in, in my opinion, I was uh, I was involved in that war on drugs, and I was okay. taking a lot of risks. And uh, as you know, if you get a criminal record, you're, you're you're toast. You're far, you know, trying to find a job, especially the people in the states, um, with a with a with a criminal record, yeah. you just okay. you go nowhere. Lawrence, you're, we're you're just a little tight on time going. because we're we're coming up against the bottom of the oh, hour. Here. What do you think about what do you think about the idea of other drugs being legalized, like magic mushrooms or LSD? Would you would you su- we, be supportive of that, sir? Well, you ask why Nova Scotians are are so. Uh, involved with uh, cannabis and mushrooms because well, mushrooms are popular here as well, and you okay. can grow them at home. Uh, you can grow your cannabis at home. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so I, I've, uh, I'm, I'm in favor of that. I actually You're in favor of that. Okay, okay. We're out of time, Lawrence. I do thank you for your call, sir. Interesting history lesson there. I appreciate it. More of your calls right after the news. The latest breaking news coming up now on News Radio. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. 1-833-668-2577. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. The issue of foreign interference top of mind for our callers right now as we ask what should happen next. Should Polyev get that clearance? Learn more about the allegations made by Mr. Trudeau yesterday. Or should the Prime Minister release all the names of all the parliamentarians alleged to have been involved in foreign interference? What do you think should happen now? Jim in Calgary. Thanks for calling. Jim, hi there. Hi, Rob. Um, thanks for taking my call. You're welcome, sir. I'm uh, I'm a little curious. Mr. Polyev has indicated that he has aides that have proper security clearances. I'm, I'm curious as to whether or not he expects them to obtain the information and share it with them, even though that would be illegal. I'm also curious as to whether or not there's maybe something in Mr. Polyev's background that would prevent him from getting proper security clearance. And that's why he hasn't bothered to try. Yeah, see, I I don't know. I don't know the answers yeah. to those questions. Um, mm-hmm. He has been a cabinet minister before, which would seem to suggest to me can't be some kind of security risk or why would Stephen Harper have made him a cabinet minister? Well, basically though, if he, if he had security clearance back then, it should continue on. And, and uh, I'm not sure whether you require security clearance to become a cabinet minister that I don't, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but it really strikes me as strange that he, he's hesitant to, to make application for proper security clearance. Yet he, he, is the leader of a party. Well, he says it's about being silenced. It's about being muzzled. It's about limiting his opportunities to question the prime minister on specific instances of foreign interference because he wouldn't be allowed to. He wouldn't be allowed to to raise, for example, the details that were in the report from the special committee created by the prime minister, the Ensikov committee. But he, he basically isn't able to do that now, and he's he's blind as to exactly what is going on because he doesn't have the clearance okay. to yeah. review the document. Uh, you know, like, okay. to me, it's, it's right. kind of a, a silly argument. 
Okay, so you think he should get the clearance then, right? I, I truly believe that if he's leader, the matter of the party, to he should have proper security clearance. Okay. And, and uh, as I say, I'm just curious as to whether there's something in his background that might prevent him from getting that clearance and that he doesn't want uh, um, Canadians to know. I, I don't know. Um, I, 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 yeah, we don't know. Uh, I don't know anything about that, of course. And yeah. But I'm sure you're not the first to think... Maybe that's maybe that's a red flag. Why isn't he doing it? Right? It's an obvious conclusion to reach. Well, and and the fact that he has aides that have clearance means diddly when it comes to to this information being provided to them. Because, as I say, legally they can't share it with them. Okay. Do you so think it, these names should be released publicly? I think there's a danger in that. In that. Uh, and I think it was brought up by an earlier caller that if there's people are accused and they are innocent, even though you can prove your innocence, you've still been called out. And, oh, yeah. and to you, me, you, that, you, that can create a problem. You're forever tarnished, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Thank you. Thank you, Again, Jim. Yeah, no, interesting thoughts uh, from Jim to uh, Ryan in Nova Scotia. Hi, Ryan. What are your thoughts on yeah, this issue, sir? Yeah. Um, so I'll just echo the, the last point. There, there's a few things I want to say. Um, okay. First is the, what the, the last point your last caller just made. Um, and, and Trudeau made that point yesterday, and it is valid. But I want to point out the hypocrisy of that comment. You can't release the names because, and he said something to the effect, and I watched about an hour and a half for that yesterday. It was wonderful. Um, okay. He said something to the effect of uh, it would be irresponsible to release these names without proof and to destroy someone's reputation and career based on um, an accusation. Well, yes. let's rewind the clock back to the beginning of the Me Too movement when he destroyed the careers of a number of his own MPs because they were falsely accused or accused without proof of sexual misconduct. And they just got outed of the party. So he does the exact same thing. He's, he's the biggest hypocrite in terms of politicians I've ever met. And watching that yesterday for an hour and a half, he seems to have the complete inability. Well, I mean, we, we don't ha- even have to go back that far. I mean, you can go back just a few minutes into his testimony when he started going on about um, conservative parliamentarians, former and current conservative candidates who are engaged in foreign interference. Yep. But and I can't they- tell you who they are no, because right. that would be irresponsible. Right. Well, and and more so, more than that, yeah. he couldn't even yeah. he, he refused to answer the question of whether there were any liberals on the list, because that would be against national security interests as well. So it's fine to point out the fact that, hey, look, oh, look at all these conservatives on the list. They're bad. They're evil. But, oh, I, oh no, I, I don't know if there's liberals on the list. I can't say that because it's national security. It's just it's so. Well, ridiculous. he did admit that there he, that he has seen the names of of liberals. He claimed that he had taken action on that. Because and then he said, because I have the clearance and Mr. Polyev doesn't. Right, and, and here's my yes. other point on, on this, and okay. then I want to talk about that tiny house you were going on about earlier. Um, there's nothing stopping <laughs> okay. him from notifying those other members of the Conservative Party, whether they're elected or 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 not. He's the Prime Minister of this country, and he has the responsibility to protect Canadians and protect their democracy. And he admitted yesterday that he does have the ability. There's nothing preventing him from going to those members of the Conservative Party and warning them and having CSIS, you know, brief them. He just doesn't want to because he thinks that should be Pierre Polyev's job, which is ridiculous. It's, it's you, you're the prime minister. It is your job. Do it. Okay, Brian. All right. Thank you. For your call, good to hear from you. No, uh, no, no, that's a topic for another day. We can get into that tomorrow uh, on the Friday Free For All. You feel free to call back then, but we do have to stop here. We're a little tight on time today. Jam-packed phone lines on this issue of foreign interference. One line available there. It's yours if you want it. 1-833-668-2577. 1-833-668-2577. It's Talkback on News Radio. something on your mind you want everyone to know call now hello 1-833-668-2577 it's talk back on now you know with rob snow on this whole foreign affairs 
foreign interference business. What do you think should happen now? Let's go to uh, Kyle in Listowel. Thank you, Kyle. Good to hear from you again. Thank you. Re- go ahead. Release the names of those people that did it. I have no problem doing that. You want to you want to disturb something that's going on in my country? I have no respect for you and what other other country you're you're working for. This is Canada. This isn't any other country in the world. Pierre Polyev should not take that security clearance because it seems to me that Justin Trudeau rather uh, protect those that are coming into this country and causing criminal crimes in my own homeland versus where these people are coming from and doing it. So, no, I think they should release every single name of these people. Absolutely. Okay, but they're just allegations, though. They're allegations from who? The RCMP? So the, the, the RCMP well, is the we, one that arrested we don't know. them, right? We don't know. Nobody's seen no, the report, the RCMP, right? The RCMP is the one that arrested them, correct? Well, they, they haven't been arrested for anything. So Nobody's then, been I arrested think, for anything. Well, how did, then what's, going, what's really going on then? Or is everybody just going to say anything? Well, these are intelligence reports. By the RCMP. Intelligence agencies, right? By the RCMP. CSIS would be RCMP, involved. So that's, that's, that's an organization that's done by the government. Right. Right. So, yeah. So, I think they should release the names of those people. Absolutely. Okay. Even if yep, they I haven't have no been charged with, with, even if they haven't been charged with anything? I still think they should release the names. Why not? Okay. Okay. No, I, I'm. I'm just. We I'm have just, no problem. You know, I'm no playing problem. devil's advocate here, no problem. Kyle. No, no, just just no, relax. No, no, Rob, Calm Rob, down. Rob, Rob, Take a deep I, breath. I, 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 okay. No, 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 no. I'm not mad at yeah. you. I'm. I'm. I'm a little hyped <laughs> okay. up. I'm just. I'm I know. Just saying. I, I, it gets me hyped up too. Believe me. Okay. No, it's no. But the, it, this it, stuff I, is I, even I, happening. I get. I get bothered because you hear all this stuff all the time about if something happens in our country, whether it doesn't matter where it comes from, India or you know, I can name every single country in the world. It doesn't matter. We should not right. be protecting those that are doing this in our own country, you know. If, okay. And if, if that has to come after, after the courts, I think still think we should release the names of those people that did it. I don't think there should be any type of protection that's going on. I think if you're if you're coming to a country or, or you're being involved in somebody else is saying do this in somebody else's country, whether it's you know like we heard about the killings that are going on out out west or whatever, right? That that the Indian government did. Then I think yeah. there should be no problem releasing those those names there, Rob. All right, like that that Fair should enough. never happen. That should never happen in Canada or any other country okay. for my for my matter. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Rob. No no disagreement there, Kyle. Thank you. It would it would be nice. Uh, Cliff is uh, calling. Cliff uh, in Edmonton. Cliff, hi there. Ah, oh, good morning, Rob. Hi, Cliff. Yeah, uh, about the uh, foreign interference. Yes, it appears sir. that. Uh, the drama queen has struck again. Uh, I don't know if uh, you've noticed this, but it seems that uh, every time that the uh, whole report comes out and uh, shows how badly he's dropped the ball on the China thing, he comes out with something on the India thing. Look at how good we're doing on this. Like, don't look there. Look here. Uh, I don't know if you noticed that. Okay, okay. So you think it kind of has um, whatever, like a wag the dog kind of thing to it, right? Oh, definitely. I mean, he's uh, oh. he's he's. It's, a, it's sort of a you know the same thing as as a magician, uh, magician right? Press to digitation. Don't look right. there. Look over here, right? Yeah. Well, I'm doing something over there that you're not looking at. Sort of yeah, I think this is one of the points that the conservatives are, are trying to drive home. I mean, one of the things that has come out of this commission of, of inquiry is the, the fact that there was what uh, an individual who's been described as a liberal power broker in the Toronto area, uh, very influential in the Chinese community in the in the Toronto area, was seen as being too close with the Chinese government and advancing interests of the Chinese government. And uh, he was under surveillance by CSIS and CSIS wanted to tap this guy's phone and had a warrant that needed to be signed by the public safety. Oh, that was the one that took 54 days to get clear. And it sat in the, uh, it sat in the minister's office for 54 days. Yeah. 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 (laughs) <laughs> but this is the government that would lead you to believe they're taking the issue of foreign interference seriously. Well, how seriously are you taking it? When a, exactly, it all depends. Do you on, have your uh, intelligence agencies who want to? They they want to. 
you know, tap this guy's phone, put bugs in his car and everything else. And yeah, uh, you sit on it for 54 days because this guy's a big fundraiser for the liberals. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's all very curious. So what do you think, um, like, should Pierre Pauly have get the clearance? And I really don't know. Uh, I can see okay. his point, you okay. know. But a- do, as do you for, think the names uh, should be released, releasing sir? the names, uh, myself, I don't feel that anybody who is charged with anything should have their name released unless they are convicted. Myself, uh, well, you don't have to. You know, it doesn't matter what what crime you're charged with. Your name can appear, in, you know, in in the news media, for example. It's not as though people, you know, don't learn about somebody's identity. In a, in a serious crime until they're convicted, for example, if somebody well, was charged with a you know a sexual assault or something, you know their name might make it into the news media or the newspaper, and exactly you know, they would have and to, defi- that, that have to defend themselves for life, at least in some circles. You know whether he gets convicted or not. Okay, okay, okay. But do you, um, so you don't think they should even be named until there's an actual criminal conviction? That's that right. Saying? Oh, I don't agree with that, sir. Okay, thank you, Cliff, for your call. I appreciate it. Uh, We'll stop here again. Everybody who's on the line now should get on the air before the top of the hour. There are free lines available for the first time in a while. 1-833-668-2577. It's Talk Back on News Radio. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. 1-833-668-2577. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. Well, lots of people with lots of opinions on the issue of foreign interference and what should happen next, whether Pierre Polyev should get that security clearance, learn more about allegations involving the Conservative Party and foreign interference, uh, claims made by Mr. Trudeau yesterday at the commission. Polyev counters and says, release all the names. Mr. Prime Minister, you have the power to do that. Just release all the names of any parliamentarian alleged to have been involved with foreign interference. What do you think should happen with this? Uh, Chris in Calgary, thanks for calling, Chris. You're up next. Go ahead, sir. I just wanted to say, you know, if, if there's any question about if uh, Polyev is being disingenuous or not, um, there was an interesting interview with um, Tom Mulcair a few months ago when this issue started to come out, and he said... Uh, as someone who would not be on Pierre's side, at least he wouldn't think so, said no. that he wouldn't accept that security clearance himself uh, in his when he was leader of the NDP because of how it would tie his hands and his ability to speak about the topic. Yes. So I think that gives some credibility to uh, Paul Yev's claims. I don't, I don't think he's... Uh, yeah. Well, originally, and, and originally, you know, that was the the, the Bloc Quebecois leader was of the same opinion. And of course, uh, you know, the Bloc leader never has anything nice to say about Pierre Polyev. But Mr. Blanchet as well said, uh, this is a stunt from from the Liberals. It's an attempt to, right. to silence other opposition parties. Yeah, and I think when you're getting right. so many different messages from so many different directions, when you yeah. see someone who is sort of that uh, ideological opposite end of the scale uh say things that would defend polyev's uh position then i think that that you put some stock in that okay okay what do you think about this idea of releasing all the names that i don't know okay yeah just kind of uncomfortable with it or maybe not well, just I, up on I, the I issue both, or... sides of the, both sides of the coin as like, you say someone because you have to you have to think be... i mean Gosh, if your name is on that list, a year life is over. Yeah, you don't know what the evidence really is. Like, how strong is the evidence? Right. And that, that's why people's names don't typically get out there until they've been charged, because then you know the evidence right. is fairly strong. But at this point, I don't know. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chris. Good oh, yeah. to hear from you. Good points all around. Uh, I, I particularly like the one about uh, Tom Holcare, because that is exactly what he 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 said. And look, Mr. Mulcair, former leader of the New Democrats, no fan of... Pierre Polyev, even Mr. Mulcair said, "I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get the clearance and read that report. I, I wouldn't. I'd be hamstrung of what I could ask the government as an opposition leader." Rick in Dartmouth, thank you for calling. Rick, go ahead. Hi there. Hi, how you doing? Good, Rick. Thank uh, you. Go ahead, sir. Great show, great show, Rob. Just, thank uh, you. I appreciate that. Fresh air here down in the Maritimes. We have our oh, you're, local you're stuff too, kind. too, of course, but uh, it's great to get a national perspective. Look. Uh, 
I don't know. I don't think uh, that uh, any of this should be public. I, okay. I personally think it all should be handled uh, within the realm of CSIS and the RCMP, and maybe, maybe uh, you know somebody in the government know. But if if, uh, if uh, laws have been broken, uh, that's the way it should go. I think this uh, this was a, a charade that Trudeau is uh, using to you know. To deflect as he usually does so uh anyway uh if uh well if yeah i mean you're not the first to bring that up it does kind of have a wag the dog thing to it look when politics was getting going uh right after thanksgiving the big story in ottawa was supposed to be are they going to try and take out mr trudeau are the liberals going to try and take out mr trudeau but we're not talking about that really are we we're talking about this instead right yep absolutely 100 yeah. percent uh Okay. It, it seems like a stunt for, from a desperate, a desperate party. But I think, just generally speaking, if Canadians think our democracy is that weak, that foreign governments can, uh, you know, make a difference in in what happens. Sure, maybe some guy in in Toronto uh, okay. has you know ties to China. Well, I mean, China will do anything, really. I mean, you know. Okay, got to go Rick, at a time. Thank you for those kind words and those comments. It's time to talk back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. Call now and have your say. 1-833-668-2577. Foreign interference seems to be the big discussion point today. We've been asking, what do you think should happen now? Given what Mr. Trudeau said yesterday at that committee, should Pierre Polyev get security clearance? Should he learn more about the allegations that Mr. Trudeau says involve the Conservative Party? Or should the Prime Minister do what Pierre Polyev is demanding and release all the names of all the parliamentarians, anyone who is alleged to have been involved with foreign interference? Just what do you think should happen here? 1-833-668-2577. Kathy in uh, Calgary. Hi, Kathy. Hi, how are you? I'm good, Kathy. Thank you for calling. What do you think should happen here? This is a stunt. Uh, As much as any other drama stunt he is brought into play throughout his years in politics. Okay. If we have an issue that's truly serious, this should be left up to thesis and not get the politicians involved at all trying to police themselves. Okay, but if it if it involves say members of a, a political party, who knows, maybe in a cabinet minister. I mean we don't we don't know. We don't know what what is involved here. Shouldn't Say the Prime Minister be informed of that? Well, I mean, I have no problem with the Prime Minister being informed. Informed? Okay. We're talking, the, we're talking some potentially serious allegations against Yes. People. Oh, yes. And, yeah. and they need to be thoroughly investigated by thesis before anyone says anything. Okay. And okay. So well, on the release also, of the names, it doesn't sound to me as though you would be in favor of that then. No. By releasing no. the names, we're simply trying to destroy people's lives. Uh, if all we're talking about is possible allegations, let's wait until there's some real evidence. And then if there is, these can bring charges and not have the politicians police themselves. Okay. Okay. What do you think about this idea? Polyev should get a security clearance. He should read that report, the unredacted report, and learn more about it. I I agree with the comments he's made, that it would only put him in an untenable position. Okay. But there's one one aspect of foreign interference that no one ever seems to mention. And that's in at least the most recent election. Our prime minister had the former president of the United States promoting how good he would be for the country. And to me, that was beyond distasteful and very public interference. Okay. Okay. Uh, At the beginning, did you say it's a stunt? Your phone kind of dropped out there. Did you say it was a stunt? Yeah, it's another stunt to take the um, public pressure off Trudeau. 
Right. A, dis- a diversion, a distraction, if you will. Yeah. You think from all the I mean, turmoil it's, it's, and his, his bad polling and everything else, right? Yeah. Okay. And it's also the second time this year he has made those same comments. So I guess he's getting desperate. Getting desperate. Okay. Thank you, Kathy, for your call. 1 668 2577. 1 668 2577. On the issue of foreign interference, what should happen now? Ron in uh, Calgary. Thanks for calling. Ron, what do you think? Good morning. Hi. How are you? Thanks for taking my I'm call. Great. You're welcome. Uh, sir. Yeah. This whole thing to me is just mind boggling that we've got a situation where, as far as I'm concerned, this is bordering treason. Like these. Mm-hmm. These are elected officials. They take an oath. They're going to protect Canada. They're going to work for Canada. Yes. We vote them in. They work for us. Yes. Um, I think it, we need to make this public. Like, if there's yeah. something going on that CSIS is looking into, like, why should we not know about this? Why are we being kept in the dark when it could affect who we decide to elect in the next election? Well, it's been raised due process, sir. Right. Well, None of these people have been charged with any crimes. These are mere allegations. No char- nobody's been charged with anything. 100%. So you, re- so you release. I, look, I'm just playing devil's advocate. But so, you, yep. so you release these names. What about these people? How do they defend themselves? They're going to be tarnished forever. Their reputation's ruined, even if they're never charged if there's, with anything. If they've done nothing wrong, they don't, there if should be no problem with them clearing their name. But if there's something there that is going on, then I think it needs to be made public. That we need to know what's going on and how, what's happening, because this is affecting our country. And I'm born and raised here, and it, I just it really makes me a hit spin when all this stuff going on and ceases. If there's something going on, why aren't they not bringing a charge? They should be bringing a charge. They should be doing the investigation. But it seems like everything's getting stonewalled. Okay. What do you think? Um... What do you think Polyev should do? Should he get that clearance, read the report? Uh, what do I, you think? I agree with he's if he does read the report, if he does get the clearance and he reads the report, his hands then are tied. Yeah. That, that just kind of you know stifles what he can do about it. Because he's not a, you know, if he does read the report, if he gets the clearance, he can't say a word. Right. He's sworn to secrecy. So, yep. Under That's pretty my <laughs> serious penalties. I mean, 14 years in prison, Max. I don't think they would throw any politician in prison for 14 years, but I mean, that's well, the sanction that's might, on the books. A few of them, so. might, a few of them might, uh, might need to go there to wake up the rest of them to realize that they work for us. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Rob okay, you in want- Calgary. Good to hear from you. 1 2577. 1 2577. Lines available right now. It's hour number two of Talk Back. Here on News Radio. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. 1 833 668 2577. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. To Richard in Calgary on foreign interference and what should happen now. What's your opinion? Uh, first of all, thank you for doing this and thank you for uh, the, uh, for, the, for your time on this. I think uh, what's important to note, though, is that the current protocols are such that the prime minister uh, the, the, does not have to have the, the opposition leader already has all the security protocols, all the uh, to be able to get all the information. What what the prime minister is simply trying to do here is by having him sign uh, certain security documents is simply to stop him from the ability to uh, use it to, to list all the different um, current government uh, or people of the current governing party that are clearly involved in, in a number of these uh, foreign interference. And I think that's just the, the reality. I think the other part, too, is that if you go to China and you've done business there, and I have many times, it, so many most of the Canadians that are so entrenched in, the, in China are, are such long-standing liberals, and it goes back to the days of uh, uh, Drill the First, that, that they, they have this incredible power, incredible uh, connection. And so uh, they're so embedded in the actual government itself there and, and, and the operations that, that uh, they're not even feeling what they're doing is wrong because they're supporting themselves. So I think it's, it's, uh, it's just something the Prime Minister is working very hard to 
try and deflect, try to do everything he can to keep the real realities of how how things really work over there. Uh, uh, and again, I've sat okay. in many meetings in China numerous times, and it's so insidious. It's so it's so clear that it just that he's just doing everything he can to protect his party. But Richard, you do think that this is an attempt by getting Polyev to get this clearance and read this Ensikov report that that is an attempt to muzzle him to a certain extent? Is that well? I, mean, I, I don't think it's. To a, I think not to a certain extent. I think that's exactly that's the only reason. Exactly. I mean, yes. Okay. Sure. That's all it is. That, that's all it's doing. That's all. It's, that's all he's doing. He's entitled to it as the leader of the opposition. Pierre Polyev is entitled to that information, and so uh, uh, it's. Uh, he, he just wants to, he just wants to put limits around it, and that's unfortunate because that's not the intention. So, uh, uh, you know, we've got to get we've got to get to this to, to dealing with our country and making sure that we're doing the best we can for our citizens, and international, and we've got to stop playing diaspora politics. We've got to stop playing. Uh, you know, uh, we, we've got to focus on on, what we, on what's best for the country and our people. Okay, thank you, Richard, for your call, Joe in Kitchener. Hi there, Joe. Thanks for calling. What do you think? Hi, Rob. Um, Hi, it's, it's very clear that uh, Trudeau is trying to pigeonhole Polyev into signing a non-disclosure agreement so that the clown himself can control the narrative. Is that not, does that not seem clear to everybody here? Am, am I missing something? Okay. Well, I guess, you know, just to play devil's advocate again, um, I guess the prime minister is saying, how can Polyev take the issue of foreign interference seriously when he doesn't even want to know what's going on in his own party? No, it's, it's about no? controlling okay. the narrative. He controlling doesn't the want, okay. he wants to make sure that Polyev and every other leader has to sign an NDA so that they can't even talk about it legally. And Polyev is brilliant for saying, no, not playing the game your way. Do I right. look stupid to you? No, I'm not doing that. But okay. and what what is this about? Oh, lives will be ruined. What lives? Whose lives? Well, if your name is on a list, don't you think that every news right? media outlet in the country would be salivating at the opportunity to individu- individually interview all these members should they be wrongly accused or rightly accused? And if you do have something to hide, then yeah, your life deserves to be over. Sorry just is what it is okay and well what if it's not true then you and you have to you have to you have to live you have to live with the the damage to your reputation the taint that is going to follow you around for the rest of your life clear your your name for free by going on national tv ctv global news pick one right okay Go to any news outlet go to any major paper and say i will come clean i'll tell you anything you want to know just ask me okay so you think polyev is in the right here right oh absolutely and absolutely. the name should be released the name should be released trudeau is afraid of the truth and he doesn't want the truth to get out and he'll do anything to cover it up to cover his own ass this has been <laughs> 10 years of this crap <laughs> What, All right, what, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Animated now? as always. You're animated as always. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Keith in Calgary. Hi there, Keith. Hey, Rob. I just want to say great Thank show. You. Nice to hear that national Thank perspective. You. Hey, uh, I think it was a complete stunt. I think it's diversion tactic. Like I listened to the interview and it was just obvious how pained and how reluctant he was to share this information, but he felt he had to because he is the protector of our people, even though Polyev right. isn't, you see. So it just, oh, it was just dripping. It was horrible. No, he's trying to okay. cause a diversion. Like four more cabinet ministers have just announced that they're not coming back for whatever reason, you know, yes. so the, everybody's deserting the ship and he's got to try to take the attention away from that. But, uh, and to release the names? No, absolutely not. It, it doesn't matter, uh, guilt or innocent. Once your name is out there like that, that's all people hear. They'll never hear the proof afterwards that, you know, it shouldn't have been released, that they were totally innocent. You don't hear that part. You only hear the, the you know, the first accusation. He was on the list, right? Keith yeah, was exactly. on the list. You're on the list. Keith was hey, on the list. The, yeah. uh, that's right. Ask the, uh, you know, the actors in Hollywood back in the 50s in the McCarthy era. You know, how many of their lives were ruined because they were on a list? 
even right. though they, they had were, nothing yeah, to do bla- with it. You know, you're talking about the yeah the McCarthy blacklisting of yeah, uh, people bet. with yeah, kinda, kinda alleged communist <laughs> sympathizers, <laughs> sympathizers, right? But, yeah, uh, sure. Oh yeah. yeah, no, exactly. So no, I I, I think and, uh, and let's face it, I think anybody can read the redacted report unless I'm uh, you know mistaken. I think no, it's actually even you online. Can read the re- yeah, you can read the redacted report, but yeah, not, exactly. not uh, but whole page not the whole pages are, no. yeah, whole yeah. pages of so it are it's blank. Say, it's going to state in there that uh, such and such blank blacked out was photographs receiving bags of cash from some operative name blanked out. Now, if that's the case, if that's how you know it is, then why are they not? Oh, I'm sure they are being investigated, but how long has it been, and why has CSIS not been able to bring charges? So there couldn't have been anything that's other than, well, you know, this person was seen talking to this person, or this person was said to have supported this person. You know, so hopefully that's as far as it is. Hopefully it's nothing worse than that, because I'd hate to think that, you know, our politicians are now going to get painted with another same brush. You know, so okay. that's my All point right. of view. Thank you, Keith, for sharing it. I appreciate it. One eight three three six six eight twenty five seventy seven. Lots of time to take your call here on Talkback. Foreign interference, the uh, top topic today. Would love to hear from you on it. This is News Radio. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. One eight three three six six eight twenty five seventy seven. It's Talkback. On Now You Know with Rob Snow. On this whole issue of foreign interference, what should happen now? I mean, I'm I'm sure you're all familiar with the basics of this news story by now. I mean, it has been in the news for for months and months and months. Just by way of a a quick refresher, the Liberals created a a committee, ENSICOP, it's called. It's a committee of MPs and senators from all parties and they get to see the super top secret stuff. And that committee spent a period of time being briefed on issues of foreign interference, and it, it, it issued a report. And that report said some Canadian parliamentarians were willing participants, semi-wittingly or wittingly was the language that was used, in the foreign interference operations of other countries. Among the revelations we know about were that some of these people were doing this to further their own interests. That was in the report. They were doing this to further their own interests, whatever that means. could mean a number of things. Elevating their standing in a a diaspora community. Uh, It could mean they're on the take. They're taking envelope stuff with cash. We don't know. Because a lot of the report is redacted, right? It's censored because it's national security material, top secret. The report said that there are people in our parliament communicating with foreign diplomats so that diaspora groups can be mobilized to swing various ridings in nomination races and election campaigns or or leadership races, such as the leadership race of the Conservative Party. People were getting funding, and the true source of the money was hidden to avoid raising any suspicions. And someone, or maybe people, multiple people, we're sharing highly sensitive government information with foreign countries. And then those foreign countries would put pressure on other parliamentarians into voting certain ways on certain issues. So you had this scenario of parliamentarians selling out their fellow parliamentarians. There were allegations someone was sharing state secrets with the intelligence agency of another country. All of that happening with parliamentarians, current, former candidates for office. So now Mr. Trudeau has said he's read the report and he knows for a fact that there are conservatives that are implicated in some of this stuff. And he says he's baffled. Why Pierre Polyev doesn't want to get the needed clearance so he can read the report and learn about what's been going on with people in the conservative party. That's what Trudeau claimed at the commission yesterday. That has been looking into this for a number of months. Mr. Polyev, for his part, has said from the very start of this, I'm not going to read that report, because if I read that report, like everyone else who reads the report, like all the members of the ENSICOP committee itself, if I read the report, I am sworn to secrecy. I am muzzled. I can't say anything. Under threat of prosecution and prison time. 
And that's the fact that comes with this report. If you are a member of this committee and you read this report, you can't talk about it. You can't name names. It's against the law. 14 years in prison, maximum penalty. Remember, even when Mr. Singh and Elizabeth May went through the process of being cleared to read this report, they weren't allowed to reveal any of the secrets that were in there. And Mr. Polyev says he doesn't want to be silenced. And that's his position. Apparently, he's sticking to it, no matter what the Prime Minister says. More of your calls right after the news. At the bottom of the hour, it's Talk Back on News Radio. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. 1 833 668 2577. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. What should happen now on foreign interference? Should Polly have get that clearance, read that report so he can at least find out what is happening with the Conservative Party? Take time for internal action, protect the Conservative Party from whatever infiltration? Should Mr. Trudeau release the names? That's Paul Ayab's demand. Make them public. Tell us who, who they are. What should happen next? one 2577 Peter in Calgary. What's your opinion here, hey. Peter? Good morning. How are you? Or good afternoon. I'm good. Um, yeah, you know good, what? Good afternoon, One of the yeah. things I haven't, I haven't heard today was uh, what the chief or the commissioner, RCMP commissioner, stated uh, at the beginning when the NSACOP report was put out, and that was that they were going to not proceed because there is a possibility of um, or implications with foreign governments that could be negative to Canada. And, and I just remember something to that effect. Now, I don't know if, to, to be all clear on that whether that's the case, but um, to the point of knowingly knowing that somebody has committed any kind of a uh, criminal offense, Section 23 has an accessory after the fact. And under the Canadian Criminal Code, it defines the legal status of an accessory after the fact. An accessory after the fact is someone who knowingly enables another person to escape criminal charges or avoid prosecution. And and so is, is okay. there a risk of that if you know that somebody has committed a crime after the fact that you could be prosecuted under this? Absolutely. I believe there would be a case to be made. I think Pierre Poilier has a good leg to stand on. Uh, Trudeau, Why do you I, say I that, sir? Little, well, I watched a little bit of Trudeau's game there uh, as he was talking about, you know, he's being irresponsible. But think about it. He says that Pierre Poilier should, uh, should take... Poilier, yeah. Paul Ed, should take a handle on his people and let them know that they're under investigation. Well, hang on a second. Uh, why are we trying to hide this? If they're under investigation, let's let's let it play out. I think the RCMP and CSIS are failing miserably in this. If there's any actual facts, or if these are some kind of planted innuendos or whatever they are, I, there there's too much dark gray area here. I've, I've dealt with law enforcement in the past, been involved in that, uh, the legal system for years. And, and I think there's a little bit of, there's a, I heard you say wag the dog. There's a wag the dog game going on here. Oh, you think so? Okay. I think there's a wag the dog game going on here. So they, you know, the wag the dog, you know, but, but, you know, put in, uh, you know, put a big issue about that, that will, you know, rally people around the flag to, divert from problems at home that's you know well, that's wag the dog for people about, who aren't you know maybe familiar are, with are that term but about, yeah but are we talking about the 400 million dollar fraud scheme under the green plan right now no no are, are you we, know, well are we talking about the growing number of liberal mps who are sick are, and tired of trudeau's leadership uh the, you know uh, exactly. all kinds of stuff there's, right there's a deflection going on here trudeau has been really good at doing that over the years uh, and okay. If people don't agree with them, they're either bigots or racists. Uh, so he plays that game. He, you got to remember, he's an entertainer. He always has been. Uh, not a very good one, but he's an entertainer. And for some reason, his charisma attracts some people's votes. It, it's not his intelligence because there is none there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you uh, for your call, Peter. Uh, to Stephen, I believe, is up next in West Gray, Ontario. Stephen? Yeah, how are you doing? I'm good, Stephen. Thank you for calling, sir. Good. My first comment is, no, you can't release the names. 
Why not? And the reason you can't is the same reason Polyev won't sign. If you do yeah, that, explain, you're subject please. to prosecution. So it's a moot point. My okay. other observation is most, if not all, of your previous callers obviously are politically biased because what they don't recall, they recall everything Trudeau's doing, they don't recall that Polyev has brought in a minimum of four non-confidence votes. He is crazy for power. By the way, I don't support a party. I don't believe in the party system, frankly. I think it just gives you a closed shop and you see what you get. So from that perspective, I think they're both as bad as each other. I don't okay. think anyone is showing leadership. And I think if Trudeau released the names, he's subject to prosecution. Why would he do it? Whether I like okay. him or not, whether I like Polly or not, is irrelevant. I'm looking at it totally clinically. Totally clinically. Okay, so what do you do in a scenario like this? For well, example, you you know, if, I, if I'm a voter in the next election, yep. do, don't I have uh, the right and doesn't the government have the obligation to tell me if I'm voting for somebody who is working against Canada's interests? Okay, so if, if, that's, your, if that's your perspective, that's fine, but you're going to have to find a legal way in order to get that, not demand someone else break the law, because that's what's happening. If you listen to Polyev, he is saying, I won't be uh, muzzled. I, I want to be able to speak out, so I won't sign it. He's just saying why Trudeau won't and can't do it. So okay. what you're asking Trudeau to do is break the law. That doesn't right, so solve you're saying, problem. yeah, yeah, you, you know, that, that this is convenient for Polyev. He's saying release the names because he knows Mr. Trudeau can't release the names. Exactly, exactly. Right. It's a mood point, and he knows it. It's Again, you point. want to talk okay. about playing right. politics. Politics is not a position. It's the state of mind supported by behaviors that are not necessarily in the best interest of the public. And that's exactly what you're seeing on all sides. You're seeing it from your callers in the same way, right? No one has said Polyev is, is trying to corner him. No one is. Right now, he's the popular guy, so they're not going to go after him. You release those names, those people, not only can you not do it, those people will be smeared. I agree with that observation you made earlier. And if you don't believe that, Think about what's happened to people where their name is released on something and then found innocent. No one pays attention, right? You do ruin the possibility. Yeah, by that point, it's too late. Going, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's a okay. moot point as well because you cannot release them. Otherwise, Trudeau is breaking the law. So for, right. for once, no one can accuse him of doing something wrong, but they're asking him to do it. <laughs> it makes okay, sense. Very, all right. Very interesting clinical analysis, as you say, Stephen. I appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for the time. Yeah, good to hear from you. Yep. It's uh, Talk Back. I, Rob Snow, still time for your calls at 1 833 668 2577 on the issue of foreign interference. If you haven't had your say, still, uh, still time to get in on the conversation today. Love to hear from you. This is News Radio. something on your mind you want everyone to know call now hello 1-833-668-2577 it's talk back on now you know with rob snow during mr trudeau's appearance yesterday there was a, a time when he was being questioned by a lawyer from the conservative party at the og commission this this inquiry that's looking into matters of foreign interference uh the lawyer's name representing the Conservative Party, Nando DeLuca, who actually went to McGill University. And, you know, Mr. Trudeau and Gerald Butts, they were part of a debating team at McGill University. And Nando DeLuca apparently debated Mr. Trudeau at, at one point. But under questioning from uh, Mr. DeLuca, Mr. Trudeau did admit that there are names that he has of liberal office holders who are alleged to have participated in foreign interference operations. But Mr. Trudeau claimed during his testimony that, that he had taken action on that and he can do that because he has the security clearance, unlike Pierre Pauly. I've rolled the tape on that again, David. That I'd like to ask you, are you aware of the names of any liberal parliamentarians, former parliamentarians or candidates that are at risk of being compromised by FI? Yes, and for other parties as well, because I have access to uh, large amounts of information. Right. You didn't mention those today, right? 
Um, we spent an entire uh, session, uh, the last time we had a public hearing, talking about uh, concerns and named individuals that, uh, that, the, uh, that CSIS and intelligence agencies had uh, within the Liberal Party. Don Valley North comes to mind as a riding. So right. as I have said many times, there have been actions taken uh, and choices made based on information we got because I had that security clearance. Right. Mr. Polyev has decided not not to get that security clearance, so he can't even know how to begin or not to make decisions regarding that information. So it's interesting. He brings up that riding Don Valley North, uh, the Han Dong riding. Han Dong was a liberal MP, since uh, an independent, and there were allegations about the nom- nomination race there, and that uh, international students from a high school were, were bussed in to vote for the favored uh, candidate in a nomination race, the candidate that would be more sympathetic to uh, the interests of the government of China. Uh, Mr. Dong, of course, denies all of that. Phyllis in Calgary, thanks for joining us. Uh, Phyllis, what do you think? Hi, Rob. How are you today? Here? I'm good. Thank you, Phyllis. Good. Um, something stinks here, Rob. <laughs> okay, um, I would say so, yes. What about, uh, I don't know, this Trudeau's such a hypocrite. Like, it goes back, like, right out of the gate. He was nothing to see here, nothing to see here. But when the public pressure got to him, he appointed his special rapporteur. And, of course, David Johnson said basically the same thing. Nothing to see here. Um, But before uh, he finished his, his report... The whole board of the Justin Trudeau Foundation, which I think he was looking into as well, they all resigned. And, you know, that just seems a little bit suspicious. Um, And um, also, you know, like how long has it been? And Trudeau's been saying there's nothing to see here. And all of a sudden there's a whole bunch of things to see. Um, it just, you know, something doesn't add up. And, you know, was was he allowed to release, re, uh, release Han Dong's name to the public? Like, what, you know, he was, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you know, might have been compromised or, you know, it, it looks like he, he, he was. So, uh, or, you know, uh, interfered with. Well, it's um, interesting that during his testimony, he brought up that particular riding yesterday. Why would he do that, right? I've taken action, right. for example, with the riding of Don Valley North. Well, okay. Did you just break the law by revealing that? Right. Like, how come he's not I, in I know that's so hard. So what do you think <laughs> should happen here? I mean, you hear from Paul, I've named the names, release the names. What do you think about that? I think... Um, Let's get it all out you know, and well, let those people all, fend for I themselves. Well, first of all, I think um, so. that uh, Polyev shouldn't be made the bad guy here. If Trudeau, okay. in fact, believes what he says, that this is uh, such, you know, an important issue for Canadians, um, then why the hell hasn't he done something about it? Why has he been denying it all along and saying nothing to see here? And then he appoints a family friend and again, nothing to see here. To me, that kind of reeks of uh, obstruction of justice. I don't know if it goes oh, okay. that far. Uh, yeah, I, well, I, I don't know. I don't know. No, but actually, but what about this my, idea? You know, P- that Pierre Polyev doesn't seem interested in f- finding out more details about it because he refuses to get this clearance and read this report. Should he... Should he do that, Mr. Polio? No, I think uh, okay. I think the, it's it's up to Trudeau. He's the prime minister. He can right. grow a pair and do something that is right and for Canadians for once, instead of you know kowtow into you know the dictatorships that he, he seems to really enjoy. And uh, all right, all right, Phyllis. Okay. Okay. Thank thanks. You. Thank Bye-bye. you for your call and, and participating in the conversation today. I really appreciate it. Okay, we're going to wind down the uh, talk pack hour coming up. one 2577 This is News Radio.
something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. 1 833 668 2577. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. Maybe just a, a few closing thoughts on this whole issue of foreign interference. It, it, when this first broke about the Ensicop report and the parliamentarians involved back uh, late spring, summertime, I was, I will say, I was gung ho on releasing the names. I, I wanted more than anything to know who these people are. Who's been selling out Canada was uh, my gut reaction to just be right up front with you. Since then, uh, I have had people kind of talk me back from the ledge. Um, it's tempered my views a little bit, not much, but a little bit, because these are allegations based on intelligence. We don't know what has gone into those intelligence reports. We don't know the kind of intelligence they're relying on. We don't even know how solid the information is. And let's face it, if you release a list of names, these are the like this is the list of the people who sold out Canada. The people on that list, their lives are ruined. Their careers are over, and they'll always be guilty. They will always be tainted just by the nature of being on that list, just by being accused. You really want to do that to people. Is that the right thing to do? Is is the proper thing to wait until criminal charges are laid by the RCMP? And then, sure, release the name of the accused. Uh, but until anyone is facing charges, is, is it really the right and proper thing to do to release a list of names and then let those people try and defend their own reputations. I don't know what the right answer is. I, it's something I have struggled with, I'll be honest with you. It, it's been argued, I will say, quite convincingly, Mr. Trudeau should release these names, and it's entirely within his power to do this. This committee was was his government's creation. It answers to him. He appoints the chair of the committee. He appoints the members of the committee. His office vets all the reports. His office redacts whatever information it wants censored from those reports. And whatever cries about the need to protect individuals from being denied any due process or keeping secret information under wraps, they fall on deaf ears because it didn't bother Mr. Trudeau when he stood in the House of Commons and said agents of the government of India were tied to the murders of Canadian citizens on Canadian soil. Trudeau was quite ready to reveal that information on the floor of the House of Commons, despite it all being based on top secret material. So some people will say, spare us. This is serious business. People are selling out Canada. These people are compromised. And they're compromising Canada. And they're compromising our democracy. And they're compromising our elections. And as citizens and as voters, we have every right to know who they are. And that is a very compelling case to make, I think. Until you stop for a moment and take a deep breath and think, what if it's not true? Because once a list of names is out there, life is never going to be the same for those people, whether it's true or not. It's also been argued that anyone whose name appears on a list would have every opportunity to, def to defend themselves. If they are elected MPs or senators, they could plead their case in the House of Commons or in the Senate or at a committee. They could have appeared at this commission into foreign interference, probably have a lawyer by their side, a lawyer who could, could, could ask questions to lawmakers. And it, of course, if they are ever charged with a crime, they would have a, a, their day in court. And this is so serious that Canadians have a right to know. So release the names and let those individuals do their best to defend their own reputations. That is the position of the Conservative Party. The Prime Minister has been saying, Mr. Polyev should be br at least be brief so he knows what's going on and can take matters into his own hands to protect the integrity of the Conservative Party. But without releasing any more details like actual names or specific actions of foreign interference, what Mr. Trudeau did this week was cast a cloud, not only over conservative MPs, but all MPs. I'm Rob Snow. We're back tomorrow with the Friday Free For All Talk Back. Hope you'll join us then. The latest breaking news is next. Um,